Good morning. This is Charter Moms Chat. I'm Inga Cotton. I'm the founder and executive director of San Antonio Charter Moms. And we've been sharing uh, activities for summer learning, we call it Charter a Summer of Learning. And today we have a guest, we have Mary Field, who's the head of academics at the International School of San Antonio, which is a private school. They teach um, Chinese and French, and they have early childhood programs. And um, so she's written a post for us. It's on our, it's the featured post today on our um, event calendar of all these summer activities. So, and the, the link is in the description. So if you go to sacharnamoms.com slash summer hyphen learning, um, you can see activities for each day. So, but today's featured activity is learning a new language, which we know you cannot learn a new language in one summer, but you can get started. And Mary has lots of ideas and ways to do that, that for the most part do not involve electronics because I think all of our kids need a break from that. So thank you, Mary. Thank you for the post and thank you for being on Charter Moms Chats this morning. Oh, thank you for having me. This should be fun. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to ask you, um, what what are reasonable expectations for uh, what a family or can do in one summer? That right? That it it can take years to really master um, a new language. But you know, but summer is it's a good time to start, or you can like maintain um, the knowledge that maybe your kids already got from studying a language in school. So mm -hmm. so how do we set expectations? Um, well, I like the way that you frame that question um, by having reasonable expectations, because I think that's really important. Um, and the thing that I always say is language learning, it's a marathon and not a sprint. Um, and you're absolutely right. Uh, it, it seems to be, you know, consistently found through, you know, our research and experience that, you know, you really do need a few thousand hours of exposure to, to really develop um, a high level of proficiency in a new language. Um, and it's the same for our first languages. You know, we yeah. spend a whole year pretty much not talking before anybody expects us to even say a couple simple words. And uh, it, it holds true for second and third language language acquisition as well. Um, so I think for summer, uh, one sort of one project that you can take on is uh, really building that interest. Um, because I think in order to have just like the stamina to keep up with things, uh, it really, really does help. Uh, if there's something else to motivate you. So, uh, you know, we can all sort of like fantasize about like uh, going to France and like ordering our a bottle of wine in perfect French. Um, but in order to get to that, to that place of being able to do that, you really need some good motivation. Um, and I think developing an interest in something that's sort of related, I think can really do that. Um, so for kids, you know, for example, um, you know, I've had a lot of students uh, over the years who've come to me and they're, you know, they're really interested in like Chinese characters and they're really fascinated by them. So um, just learning more and more and sort of keeping a, a tally of like how many they know can, can really help the, the motivation. Right. And when, like at um, the San Antonio Museum of Art, like that's, you mentioned like museum resources in the post and like, and, oh, yeah. and the, um, in the Asian art wing at the San Antonio Museum of Art, they have beautiful calligraphy, um, you know, that shows Chinese characters, right? Whether it's art from, you know, Korea or Japan or, or China, um, you know, that how, um, you know, because calligraphy is such an interesting art form and the, the calligrapher is just taken in a whole other direction, right? That it's, it's, there are layers to it that, right? Like I can see like, oh, that's an interesting yeah. form. But if I, if I actually knew what the characters meant, then, you know, I could see more of the interplay, right? Between like mm -hmm. the poetry, you know, and like the, the multiple meanings that a character could have, or maybe there's like puns mm -hmm. involved with the pronunciation. And yeah, there's just, a lot, there's a lot more, I can see that as being an entry point. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, like, yeah. Um, the San Antonio Museum of Art, uh, you know, for a, a smaller size museum, they really do have a great um, Asian art wing and particularly the Chinese porcelains. Uh, yeah. it, it's a, actually quite an impressive collection. And I've been sending people down there for, for years. To <laughs> 
Yeah. And they've, they've recently reopened, right? I know they were closed for a while mm -hmm. because of, of COVID, but they, yeah, they have, they have reopened. Um, and it, I, um, when you were talking, oh, two, uh, two thoughts. One is it seems like in, in several of these posts this summer that motivation has come up as a topic. Like when yeah. we were talking about classical music with uh, Trey Peters of Yosa, you know, he was talking about like how, how young musicians stay motivated to practice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they can't, they can't gather to perform in orchestras right now, but they can, they can keep practicing and that, and that keeping it fun um, is part of like keeping that motivation. Um, yeah, because you, you do have to put in the time uh, yeah. to get you're good at it, you know, but then having, having a goal in mind and like seeing, getting, having the sense that you're improving and making progress is, is yeah. rewarding. Yeah, I can see the parallels with music, especially because again, you just have this idea of, you know, playing Carnegie Hall yeah. and uh, to get there, you, you know, you really do, there has to be something else there has to be something else sort of fueling you or else, you know, people do get frustrated because um, it's hard to have a sense of your own progress, particularly as you get a little bit older. You know, my, my three-year-olds and four-year-olds and five-year-olds, like they don't really give a hoot, uh, <laughs> but you know, eventually, um, you know, with older children, they're, they really, they do get frustrated just like adults do. Yeah. And in the post, you mentioned that uh, sometimes it's movies or, or TV that uh, that get people interested, right? Like they'll fall in love with like, oh, yeah. cinema, right? And they've been watching it with subtitles, but they they want they want to know what the characters are really saying, right? And then, oh, you oh, mentioned, okay, I'm skipping it. I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but you mentioned that there's actually a browser extension. That, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, this is fascinating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've, uh, I guess my sort of like caveat is I don't recommend this with the kids necessarily because, uh, you know, they have plenty of, of, of screens. Um, but for, for years I've been hearing adults tell me, um, that, you know, they got interested in learning Chinese through watching Taiwanese soap operas um and I've heard the same for for Korean um I uh, have been learning Spanish pretty much through um just watching tv shows on Netflix um as you know my husband is from Mexico um but like the cobbler's kids have no shoes so <laughs> Uh, I, I, you know, a asking for a Spanish lesson every night over dinner is not happening. So, you know, we just watch uh, Spanish language shows on Netflix and it's fun, as you mentioned, you know, having that fun aspect, you know, mm -hmm. keep, keeps, um, keeps me coming back. Um, and then, you know, it works, it works. Uh, you know, my mother-in-law, she doesn't speak English. So uh, if, if we want to chat and we do, you know, it's kind of on me to learn how to do that. Um, so, so yeah, I think, uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily put, put the kids in front of Netflix all summer long. <laughs> um, but, but adult, as adults, we need our downtime though. As That's, adults. Yeah. yeah. And then the extension yeah. on, on Netflix. Um, oh yeah. It, it, it will show so you can choose like the subtitles you get um because you know right now at my level i still watch things with the english subtitles um but the next step is you know watching a spanish uh program with with spanish subtitles um and i i believe you can also have both oh, um, interesting. and it's actually um it is so, it really is so helpful because, uh, you know, I've been looking for things for, for years um, for, for my students, for Chinese, because, um, you know, they, they run into the same problems as anybody else. Like they can kind of get it, but not really. And, you know, they, they need a translation to, to, you know, again, stay motivated and stay with it to continue yeah. watching it. Because if you don't understand something that well, it does get very boring. Yeah. Uh, so that there's, there's, key. there's that gap between like if you have sort of the book learning versus like that conversation will flow mm -hmm. right and like how how people speak when when they're speaking mm -hmm. language how fast they are getting mm -hmm. concepts across so like what's on tv is going to be 
more like what people in real life are saying rather not like on a you know in an app or something where everything is like turtle slow <laughs> yeah yeah and i believe with the with the netflix you can slow it down um hopefully i'm right about that please don't send me emails if i'm wrong um but yeah you're you're absolutely right that uh you know one of the things and you know in our school i tell this to my teachers all the time you know one of the most important things we can do to help the students understand us is to just speak more slowly to them um and and for people you know is if we have let's say uh, uh, a guest, like a, a French chef comes and, you know, he's a chef, he's not a teacher. You know, <laughs> the, the one thing that I can tell him to do to, to help the, the conversation, like, please just speak much more slowly than you think you need to. And that's really gonna help everybody understand you. Yeah, yeah. That ties in with, um, I, was, I was reading about you know, like language acquisition for young children, like even in learning their native language, like there's there's some different ways that adults sort of habits that they slip into when they speak to young children. And it really does help um, build up. And so I mean, what you're saying about, you know, how they're acquiring uh, your French, it, it applies to like how people do baby talk with their with their own kids mm -hmm. as Absolutely. well. So, yeah, and I know we're, we're skipping around on our topics. It's just such a good conversation, but like, um, you know, so one thing that um, you include in the, in the article is a link about, like uh, language immersion, right? So this is more mm -hmm. relevant to like what you do in the school, but like, so, but like, so at the International School of San Antonio, you, the, the classes are immersion style, right? And so tell us about how that like helps kids acquire language. So I'm just really curious about that. It's not the same as what we can, we can't really do that at home, um, yeah. you know, but, but it's, it's, I think it's interesting to understand how powerful that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It is, um, I think, one of the most important challenges that we have as a school is knowing, okay, our parents are in, most of the time quite limited in, in, in what they can sort of help with in terms of the language. Other things, of course, they can do. Right. Um, They'll bring snacks. They'll bring crayons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you can, you can always read to your kid in English and, and do, you know, for my preschoolers, counting and all sorts of number sense things, you know, there's no reason you can't do that at home in your in your home language. Um, but immersion. Uh, so as we talked about when we first started, um, it really is all about like time. You know, you just need a lot of of time hearing the language and being able to understand what you hear. Yeah. So it, it's that two parts that are really important. Uh, just the exposure and being able to understand it. So I always tell people, you know, you can like turn on the, the radio to like the Polish station and like put your kid in front of it. And they're not going to learn Polish because they won't understand anything. So you, you need both the hearing the language and understanding what's going on. And it seems to be that you need at least, uh, it's hard to put a number on things, um, but it seems to be about two to 3,000 hours to really get a handle on a language. Um, and if you just sort of do the math, um, if you're doing an hour a week, two hours a week, it's gonna take you a while to get there. Um, but with an immersion program, because the kids are, you know, greeting, eating, sleeping, the language, um for seven eight hours a day um that they can spend you know really the amount of time that they need in order to really acquire that language um and it's it's fun right because you know we're doing the same things that like um you get in in preschool, we're doing arts, we're doing crafts, we're playing games, um, we're reading books, singing songs. Like, it's not what we do to older children where we hand them a textbook and say, okay, go learn Spanish, which is, you know, not the most fun process. Um, depending on, you know, the situation and the teacher, I'm sure there are, there are some programs that keep it fun, uh, even like that. But, but yeah, you, you what you get with immersion is really just enough time uh, to, to really acquire that language. And you also get the, the variety of, um, 
of experiences. Cause I, I think that's right. also important too, that, um, you, you learn the words for, um, for whatever you're learning about in school. So you're getting that like subject matter, you know, from, and I know we're talking about young children, but they, you know, they still learn, you know, science, like it's at the preschool level, of course, but they're learning right. science, they're learning uh, history, they're learning geography, um, they're learning about food, they're learning about their bodies, they're learning about their families. So you do get that sort of like rich experience. That makes it, that, yeah, it's practical. It's a real, well, and it's just it ties together with several things. So for young children, you talk about vegetables and you talk about yeah. children's book and also um, like ordering seeds, right? So like, yeah. um, let's see, so you mentioned water spinach. Now, I'm really curious now what water spinach is. I'm going to try to track some down. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, yeah. So I think that I have the, the book that I mentioned, I have the Chinese book. Oh, cool. Okay, here, I'm uh, going to widescreen you so you can show up the book, okay. 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 So, so for readers, this is a book by Grace Lynn and it's called the ugly vegetables. Yeah. Um, so this is available. I think it was first published in English. Um, right. But a lot, a lot of her books, um, are available in Chinese. And I think, um, I think Grace Lynn is a really good storyteller. Um, and you know, some children's books, they really are better than others. So <laughs> and I think her, her books, though, at least the ones I read, they're, they're terrific. So um, food, I think, is all, often a way in for learning about a new culture and the, the language that uh, is part of that culture. So, um, and this book is about uh, planting Chinese vegetables. And because we are in the age of, you know, things just being widely available on the internet. Um, and I did double check this before I, I put it in the article. You can order the seeds for a lot of what she has in this book. So the water spinach, um, I think it's the, I think that's the Kong Xin Tai. Um, that is, it's super common in China. Um, but, uh, you know, I've almost never seen it here. Um, and I have, you know, absolutely a black thumb. Uh, but I have heard from other other people um, that actually, you know, growing vegetables uh, in a little planter, it's, I guess it's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I'm not capable of doing it, but uh, it's a very like sort of doable project. Um, for for little kids and you know um a lot of them really do love playing around in the dirt yeah. <laughs> and if yeah. you can focus that um i think that's that's really great and yeah just but, just learn yeah. about um another part of the world we had another post this month about uh gardening about like so there's a place called gardenville in chicago you can go pick up like loads and loads of like mulch and compost and Oh, and cool. stuff like that and so yeah right so i'm gonna i'll add the link to that post um but it's fun how these things are interrelated right so you can yeah, plant the garden yeah. and learn about you know like that the compost comes from you know waste that was diverted from the landfill right and learn right, you know yeah. watch youtube videos about how compost is made you know but then also if you plant chinese vegetables right you get to thinking about how like the cuisine is different in different countries right mm -hmm. and um even um i actually in our, our chat we had for father's day we were, our topic was storytelling between like mm -hmm. dads and their kids and one of the concepts was like, you know, can you ask, like, ask like a group of people, like what, what's your, what was your favorite breakfast growing up? And depending on where they come from, you could get a completely different answer, right? So the Texan might oh, yeah. say, you know, but, you know, bacon egg taco, right? But then like somebody from China, it might be some of these vegetables, right? And then an American would be like, you were eating triple amaranth for, or tricolor amaranth for, you know, I don't know, that may not be a breakfast food. I don't know, maybe Chinese people are like, that's crazy. You don't eat that for breakfast, but no, but there's, but like, like I'm of Northern European descent and there's lots of uh, fish things that are on the breakfast menu when you go to, you know, Denmark or Sweden and things that Americans be like, really? Yeah. Eat? That, that herring smells pretty ripe. I don't know. Is that really <laughs> food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, mean, I think I think you're to totally right. Uh, one of one of my like um, 
one of my little theories. I mean, not a real theory that I've <laughs> developed over the years is that like breakfast is the hardest meal to sort of go outside your comfort zone. Right. Yes. That's exactly, that's what, that's what Dr. Boyd was saying. Like, that's where it yeah. comes home. Like that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's your, that's your center. That's the hardest thing to shift. Right. Absolutely. That's where, yeah. Like you might try something else, but like where you, what, what is your, your favorite breakfast? That's your, yeah, your you, for life. <laughs> you just want a bagel or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, well, and speaking of food, um, one of the things you recommend for, for teenagers is that like if let's say they've been learning French in school, then you like you suggest like a cooking video, right? So mm -hmm. it's the video is entirely in French. And so yes, it, we are using electronics, but yep. um, you know, they can learn the recipe from the video and it gets mm -hmm. them. And then there's also it's fun because there's a purpose, there's a, a goal yeah. and an activity. It's not just someday I will, you yeah. know, go to France and meet a boy or whatever, you know, but it's more like, <laughs> you know, I can make an omelet or I can make a quiche, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, because th there are um, I don't want to say loads, uh, but I have found dozens of lovely French people who have made videos of you know how to cook basic French dishes. Um. And, you know, all peace and love to our French brothers and sisters, but you know, they're not super complicated. I, I think it, uh, I think it is totally doable, uh, you know, for, for a young person who doesn't have much experience in the kitchen. Um, yeah. And it's just that like, sort of, again, that the motivation, um, and the, Almost like the responsibility of it, I think, can can be helpful. Right. Uh, you mentioned how, like, sometimes with teenagers, it actually paradoxically, it's like if you set higher expectations for them, they will rise to the occasion. Whereas if you make something too simple, then they're like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know that stage, um, you know, it's just all about the tension between like not being a kid anymore and mm -hmm. not being an adult yet, and. Uh, yeah yeah uh, the the i i think it doesn't always work it's not guaranteed but i think a, a good strategy it, it can often be to um yeah just give them that little extra responsibility and and letting them like rise to the occasion yeah yeah well, that's good. I, and so for we talked about stuff for young kids, we talked about stuff for teenagers, and then kind of as sort of in between, or really for any ages, like um, like in the post you mentioned about how San Antonio has sister city relationships with mm -hmm. cities on like all these different continents, and, um, and so I, and there's a link in the post uh, where you can you can find, and then um, you said like around town there's different uh, landmarks or um, right, so like on the Riverwalk you can find. Uh, where there's Chinese characters. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know, you might to drop some hints about where we can um, find the. Yeah. So is, near, I, is it near the, is it near the Pearl or kind of near Sama? Yeah. Are those the ones you okay. no, again, please don't send me emails if I'm like remembering this wrong. <laughs> no, I think it's like, it's kind of across the river from Sama. So like south of the Pearl and there's some apartments and then it's on these sort of silver looking. Yeah. Apartments, yes. Right. Yeah. And it's from hemisphere. And I, I mm -hmm. don't, I know I've walked by it and I, I was trying to find a picture of it in my, in my stash, but I, I, I couldn't yeah. find it, but they're beautiful. Yeah. They, they are. Yeah. I think, um, San Antonio in general, um, I don't know if, if it's just because of, you know, what I do or, or what, but I do think we have, um, unusually productive relationships with our sister cities. I haven't. I agree. I don't think know, most cities place. talk about it that much. It feels like, yeah, like it comes I, I, up. I, like it, I, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've certainly noticed that it's, it's just talked about more here. I, uh, you know, other places I live, like, I mean, you would barely know that there's a thing called a sister city. Um, but, uh, yeah, so all around town, we can find gifts that we've received from our sister cities. Um, uh, 
I think I think what I mentioned in the article was the there's a Japanese garden that was a gift from Kumamoto in in Japan. Um, I confirmed it's it's open again. They they it was closed. You know the garden closed for COVID, and then that area of the garden was under renovation for several years. But um, but the Kumamoto and garden has reopened. That's, that's it's, in, it's in beautiful condition. Yeah, the grass looks really good because it, it didn't get walked on for a while. Nobody's trampling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that that's a that's a cool one. Um, and I know I have to think of this, I guess, from the top of my head now. But you know, there's gifts from Mexico. Um, and the, the the future dinner from the post is a a reproduction of a um, Mesoamerican. Uh, like statue, um, yeah. but it's, it's by the Instituto de Mexico in uh, Hemisphere. So, cool. right, so there's several, and there, there's like a giant Olmec head, and so there's a bunch of cool stuff in Hemisphere. Oh, and it, speaking of Hemisphere, at the Magic Theater, they have uh, two uh, like human sized figurines, but they're, I think they're cats, and they're from Hushi, which is oh, cool. a city in China. Oh, yeah, but they're in the lobby at the Magic Theater, and they, they've reopened. So, yes, so it's okay. like things are starting to reopen you know yeah. after, like, stay home yeah, so i guess i i think you know going around and like seeing these things um so, you know some are going to be more interesting to kids than others um but yeah that just sort of develops the interest in in other places yeah yeah even at the institute of texan cultures they have a, a big sign with arrows pointing different directions and it says like how many miles to like Windhook, Namibia. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Different. Like, it's yeah. It's really. I think you're right. I think. I think so, maybe it's the relationships. Like the city of San Antonio really puts the effort. But like mm. you said, these are these are productive relationships. There's mm. signs around town, and even like donations of PPE for frontline yeah, workers. And yeah. I mean, there's. I heard about you know, that. Yeah, yeah, that, that it, it has it has an impact in the real world, um, you know, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing to talk to our kids about, you know, that, like, right, like, maybe this is a time when we can't travel as much, but we can start building language skills, and we can, you know, make plans, like, someday I want to travel mm -hmm. to this place, and yeah. yeah, yeah, I know my my kids have been have been talking about that, about places, places they'd like to visit someday. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, um, I, there are just so many great activities in this in this post, and I like how they work for different ages, and it makes it fun. It gets them off of screens, and um, you know, it's just it's stuff that families can do together. You know, like like everybody gets to eat the, the omelet, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like like I said before, we we went live. You know, I think. Um, I think parents, they, you know, they don't need me to, to tell them about things that you can do with an iPad. Like, I think parents are pretty capable. Um, but I, I just, I did want to give some ideas for, for things that you can uh, do with your kids sort of out in the, in the real world, so to speak. Um, while also, you know, being aware of the fact that, you know, we, um, COVID isn't over. Um, right. And there are still, you know, plenty of families who who feel like they need to to limit their their contact and you know what what they do outside of their their home. So mm -hmm. um, it was uh, it was kind of a challenge to to, to write, um, but I, I think I think we got there, and I hope to to be of service to to families who you know have had a really tough few months, I think. Yeah, it has. It's 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 hard to, you know, keep up morale. And I think I think mm -hmm. part of what our overall project of having all these posts about things you could learn is that um, you know, instead of just like vegetating or waiting for the time to pass by, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, use like you said, it takes hours. It takes like mm -hmm. can take thousands of hours to get mastery of a language. So, you know, but there's no better time to start than today. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, you, you instead of saying you're bored, you know, <laughs> put the put the time to good work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. Are there? Um, can you tell us more about the International School of San Antonio and uh, like what what programs y'all offer? And you know, just and I want to invite people. Here's the URL on the screen. And, um, and, you know, there's links in the post, and I encourage you to, if you're curious, you know, folks would visit the website, right? But but just tell us like what are some highlights. Um, okay, so we um, 
We offer a full-time um, comprehensive immersion preschool program. We have a French language track and a Mandarin Chinese language track. Um, in addition to that, uh, we offer Saturday classes um, and camps. So our preschool is for children um, two to five for French and three to five in the Chinese. Um, and then our classes and camps are for children three to 12. Uh, so all of our programs, they're all immersion programs. So we, you know, my teachers and I, we use either French or Chinese um, as the language of instruction. Um, and we keep things fun. Uh, so we're just doing, um, you know, activities, crafts, um, books, games, all those things, you know, we're just doing it in, in the, in those languages. Um, and our preschool program, um, as I mentioned, it's a, a comprehensive program. So kids get, uh, language arts, um, math. Uh, science, geography, culture, um, PE, all those things. So we just do it in the um, in the target language of either French or Mandarin Chinese. And we're a, a licensed program. Um, we're we are new, <laughs> um, but we are when we have very small cl class sizes, sort of by design, um, because you know we need the teachers to be able to interact with the students um, yeah. as much as possible. So we're, we're a small program. Um, we are doing uh, some summer camps um, in July. Uh, I, I think at least, um, so we're, we're only having a maximum of six students per class just to keep, just to keep it a really yeah. small group. Um, I think we still have a few spots open for some of them. Um, and then our preschool program, uh, we are, um, we will open that back up in August. Okay. So we're okay. doing, um, right now we're doing virtual tours. Um, and then we can also schedule uh, in-person tours. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, you know, it, I know it's a, it's a tough situation for anybody who's, you know, managing a school right now or anybody who's mm -hmm. teaching and, um, you know, I just, I, think, I, I wish you guys the best as you navigate this and, you know, communicate with your parents and, you know, try to keep all the children safe. But, you know, I think families appreciate how important it is for kids to keep learning and, yep. and to have influence in their, in their lives, you mm -hmm. know, besides just the family, right? Have, you know, cause like, you know, if, if you want your kids, you know, like if I want my kids to learn a language in an immersion setting, you know, English is the only language I'm fluent in. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I definitely, I appreciate how my kids have learned Spanish and Latin at their at their charter school and you know they're getting skills there that, that i'm not able um to provide for them although now I'm, I'm curious if netflix that netflix extension has any shows in latin <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I don't know about latin but <laughs> you can certainly uh italian spanish <laughs> yeah yeah but no i don't you know I and mean, we do have a copy of winnie the pooh in latin Oh, so. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's languages are so fascinating, right? Like you said, it's a, yeah. it's a window, you know, into like, you know, food and, and, you know, cultures and, you know, all this like, you know, this wonderful history, like, right. Cause like a lot of the gifts we've gotten from other countries are, you know, have are works of art and, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So we can, yeah, we can, we're here in San Antonio, but we're not alone. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I, I, it's maybe it's it's corny, but I feel like when um, when parents help their children to acquire a new language, it you know it really is you know just opening opening up the the door to another world. Um, and it, it it really does enrich your life. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a that's a great rallying cry, and I I think I hope that this the, you know our purpose of these posts is to take these subjects that might be intimidating for people and just be like, look, here's an on ramp. Okay, it's fun. You yeah. can keep your expectations reasonable, and you know you have a even whatever little whatever progress you make, you feel have a sense of accomplishment, and it's it's better than just you know vegging and 
just watching TV all the time because you after you'll be like, what happened to my summer? You know, so instead you can be like, well, this summer we started learning this, and yeah. and then you know it opens it opens these doors. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, do you have okay? Do you have any any closing thoughts or any any advice about um, the about learning a new language? Um, yeah, I guess, like I said at the beginning, that the thing that I always want people to remember is that, you know, it is, um, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, but also that, like, you know, bilingualism or trilingualism, it's not an either or, you know, um, we, you know, we really have to give ourselves credit and uh, give other people credit as well and respect for, um, for whatever level of proficiency they have, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it takes for, you know, when these kids get older, it does take a certain amount of, um, of bravery to, to, to talk to a, a person in your, in your second or third language at the beginning, hopefully it gets mm -hmm. easier. Um, and to, you know, just acknowledge that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we we can still communicate um, even when we're at the beginning of our journey of learning something new um, and just to, you know, have have respect and compassion for that experience. Yeah. Right. Have that have that growth mindset that it's OK to make mistakes. The important thing is you're trying, you're practicing. Yeah. And you and you can you can keep growing, and that these things are, are mutable, right? So you, you may mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm I'm a person who's not good at language as well. Those that may be a characteristic you can change if you have support and you have practice. Oh yeah, right? yeah, you know. And if anybody yeah. thinks that, oh, I'm not good at language, come to me. I'll fix you. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. Thank you. So I'm going to put up. This is the URL for the overall project. The um, Charter of Summer of Learning, and today's featured post is about learning new language, and our guest has been. Uh, Mary Field, the head of academics at the International School of San Antonio. So thank you so much for being a guest on Charter House Chats. I learned so much from this well, and it's you. really enjoyable. Yeah. No, it's my pleasure. Yeah. I really enjoyed doing this. Okay. And I know we'll, we'll see you again in the Charter Homes discussion group. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.